Another device we have under the connection devices is what we call a script device. Now a script device is using JavaScript engine to be able to communicate with any, anything from RS-232 and TCP and this is where the device we use to get two-way feedback from that device to know perhaps what the status of a light is, what the status of a TV is or whatever if that device can give you two-way feedback. Now before we have a look in script devices, one important thing we need to do is up under serial port 1, right mouse click on that and go to properties and down here we need to set how you want to communicate with your device. Is it going to be RS-232 or TCP? Now if it's going to be RS-232 you must set the board rate to match the device, the communication board speed of the device you want to talk to. If we select TCP, the TCP port is done via the software so you don't have to worry about that. Now before just hitting OK, make sure you hit the apply button. So always hit the apply button and then the OK. Now once we've set that, we can then go down and have a look at script devices. What I'm going to do is I'm going to import a script device so I can right mouse click on script devices, import the script device, which I've got a couple here, I'm going to select the M1 script device and I've now got the M1 script device imported. Now in this demonstration that we have with the M1, we can communicate to the um, M1 for security, switch outputs on and off, control lighting, um, whatever we want it to do. Now to have a look inside that script device, if I right mouse click on there and go to properties, what will happen when we ever select a script device, we'll always open on the notes pages. It's always a good idea to read through those notes and pick up because there'll be a lot of vital information that you may need in there. It tells you how the script device works, some other settings that you may need for that script device um, in relation to the feedback we're getting back from that device to bring on there. Now, the first thing we can do at the top here is set how do we want to communicate, RS-232 or TCP or UDP. Now, if it's TCP, for example, um, on this, my example here I'm going to use, the serial device we also set for TCP. So of course naturally you have to make sure that they're both the same. We set the port, if it's TCP, we set the port number, the IP address and we're good to go. Now we use functions here. We've got some tabs, function, incoming data and feedback. If I go across from the notes section to the functions, because we're using functions as in a, some, a JavaScript device, we can then drop down and you'll see all the devices or all the functions that we can do for this, um, whoever wrote this script device. It can be set the ARM mode, in other words set the security system to ARM, to stay, monitor mode, away mode, the vacation mode, etc. We can query the ARM status to know what state it's in, trigger a task, query the temperature, query the zone status, turn an output on, turn an output on, toggle, toggle an output, Query the output status. When we open a page on our GUI, we want to know what the state of that output is. We can send text to an M1 keypad. We can turn a light on, turn it off, toggle the light, dim a light to a level, a query the light status, etc. So there are all the functions, are all the things that we can do um, with the M1. We then have a look at incoming data, and the incoming data for this particular JavaScript, it's incoming in ASCII. We've got a known terminator in hex which is 0D, 0A which is carriage return and light feed. So we never touch that, that's fine for the script. We then go to the feedback and this is what we're expecting back and we'll have a little bit of a look at that term in a moment. Now don't get panicky with what I'm about to show you because you don't necessarily have to know how the JavaScript or inside the guts of the JavaScript. We can just have a look at this um, for those who are interested but for those who aren't, just want to use it, we can just use it in a moment. Now if I'm on functions and drop down from my functions, here's all the things that we can do for the M1. Now if I hit toggle output for example, when I go toggle output, there's the JavaScript for that particular um, function that we want to do, in this case toggle an output. If I was to tick eval, I can test or evaluate that output to make sure the script is fine and I hit output 3 in this example. Now in there, that would be the command that we're actually going to send to the M1. 
So if you know the M1 protocols, you can look at that up and say, yep, that is right. That's the bytes it's going to send. That's the script that goes out of the genie. And we hit OK. And yes, I can hear output 3 toggle in the background. I can toggle it back again, output 3. Again, do it again, and output 3 turns off. So we can do that for any of the um, functions that we want to do, whether it be toggle a light, turn an output, we can test that um, evaluation there. Now if I go to feedback, on the particular feedback here, I can select what I wanted to get feedback from. In this example, let's have a get feedback on output 3. When I tick there, there's the little bit of JavaScript for when we're getting the feedback back, and there's actually the expression that I'm expecting to come back from the M1. In this case, it's output 3, and if we know what the protocol is for M1, for those who know, there's the 003 for um, contact change um, on there. Again, if I can test it, I can copy and paste it into my test data, get rid of the section at the end because that's the variable that can change from the um, device. So I can take that out and put, say, 1 in there, and 1 will come up as active. If I put a 1 in there, it's inactive, and it comes up as inactive. But this being perhaps output 3, what we can do is an output can be act obviously active, inactive, but if it's a sprinkler, for example, we might call that on or off. If it's a door lock, it might be locked and unlocked. You know, we may not want to know if, the, if there's text coming up on a GUI page. I don't want to know, is my front door active or inactive? I want to know if it's locked or unlocked. So I can go and change the thing here from active to unlocked and inactive to locked. Now when I change the example up here to 1, it will come up unlocked. And if I change this here to back to a 0, it's locked. So it's a nice, easy way of being able to change a little bit of the um, JavaScript or the contents without changing the whole script itself and messing it up. So as I said, don't have to get panicky if you're thinking, well, all this is too hard. We don't have to use it. I can just hit the OK. When I drop down the functions here, here's all the functions that I can just drag with. I don't have to know what's inside. Much the same as when we drop down the IR codes on an IR. We don't necessarily have to know how IR works to be able to use it. We can just drop it down and, for example, toggle an output. I can then just use this command and we'll have a look on the GUI later. And we can just drag and drop that onto a button and select what output will be and that will then activate. So it can be as simple as that. But for those that I showed you inside the JavaScript who want to write their own JavaScript, that's how it is um, from inside.